Because if we think about it, the ability to reliably and robustly program biology could transform health and medicine through allowing us to generate programmable molecular scale devices that could detect and respond to infection inside your body. It could allow us to transform how we feed an ever growing population in the midst of climate change through allowing us to program plants to be resistant to drought or fungal infection. The ability to program biology could even uh, revolutionize how we power an increasingly energy greedy planet through the generation of artificial fuels or even something like artificial photosynthesis. Now, I'm often asked, you know, why is Microsoft interested in biology? And I think that. Um, it's, it's fairly obvious to me because given that Microsoft was at the forefront of the very first software revolution, it makes sense that it be at the forefront of the next software revolution, which I would think of as being the living software revolution. And just as we couldn't imagine 50 years ago the kinds of technologies and companies that would emerge from programming on silicon, I don't think now we'd be able to imagine what we could do with being able to program biology. And it's not such a crazy idea, okay? So um, like the computers and phones and everything that we're using every day, cells themselves perform computation. All, I'm, all I mean is they process information. That's how cells make the decisions to divide or die or grow or move. But cells don't run on transistors that are made out of silicon. They have to use their biochemistry to execute their programs. And they take in different types of information. They use mechanical information, electrical information, and chemical information. But unfortunately, understanding biological computation is really not that simple. And that's not least because it bears almost no resemblance to the silicon-based computation we're so familiar with. If we think about it, in contrast to engineered systems, living systems self-generate. So what I'm showing here is an example of mitosis, the stages um, that cells go through as they divide. Unlike engineered systems, biological systems self-organize. So what you're seeing here is an image of a developing mouse embryo, and you can start to see some familiar structures emerging. Unlike engineered systems, biological systems self-repair. This is an example of a blood clot forming over a wound. Unlike engineered systems, biological systems have to sense and actuate at molecular scales. And those molecular level interactions lead to macro scale output in the form of intelligence or memory or emotion. And what I'm showing here is a, a real neural network. That's some neurons forming a network in the brain. And unlike engineered systems, cells have to undertake massively parallel operations with slow and noisy components in a really noisy environment. What this image shows is a, a rendering of the cellular landscape, so you can see how tightly packed the mitochondria, the proteins, and everything are in the cell. And perhaps most intriguingly, unlike engineered systems, biological systems blur the line between software and hardware. During development, the software is responsible for producing and assembling the hardware, which is the organism. But throughout that process, the developing organism itself has to run that program. So in other words, the hardware generates the software, sorry, the hardware runs the software while the software simultaneously generates the hardware. 